What's going on, everyone? What's going on? Welcome into another episode of Couch in the Game. It's the Game Within the Game podcast featuring me, your host, Desmond Jones, and my man, the one and only, Juwan Pullman Stewart. Today, we got another special guest in the building, but before we talk about today's guest, I want to remind the audience and listeners that Capture in the Game podcast is presented by Capture Sports Agency, where the CEO and founder is Sean Smith Jones. You can follow us on all social media platforms, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, we're on all social media platforms at CTG underscore podcast. Now that we got the introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about today's guest. Today, I bring you the professional athlete herself from hailing from Marquette Women's Basketball. Her name is Lauren Van Clooney. Lauren, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. Oh yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, so thank you for hopping on the podcast. I am now dubbing this season two of the podcast, even though my intro was a, was a little shaky right now. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it because Jamal would call me out on it, but he's always with us, you know, in spirit. Um, he's battling COVID right now at the time of recording this podcast. So, um, you know, prayers up for him as he recovers right now. COVID is still out here. Um, so continue just to be mindful, you know, continue wash your hands, uh, continue to, you know, do the key things you can do to keep yourself safe, and but also your loved ones safe. Couldn't have said any better. Yeah. But Lauren, as we kick off the podcast, as we typically do it, you know, I always let the, the guests introduce themselves. Lauren, can you go ahead and introduce who you are to the audience? Yeah. So like you said, uh, that's when I'm Lauren Van Clinton. I uh, originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, moved up to Wisconsin to pursue a student athlete um, at Marquette University, where uh, I had an amazing time, um, met some of my best friends there, had a great six-year career there, and then now I'm living out my dream to play um, professional basketball as well. Awesome. So so go ahead, tell the audience where you're going to be playing basketball at. So I'm, uh, as LeBron said, what do you say? I'm taking my talents now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> headed to, uh, I'm headed to um, Spain. I'm headed to Madrid, Spain uh, in this fall that I'll go, I'll be going over there to um, play overseas, one of the highest levels. So I'm extremely, extremely excited to, to be doing that. Yeah. So I'm going to give you your round of applause and your roses right now, <laughs> because like, it's, it's, like it's so incredible. Like I know you went through like some of the pre-draft process for the WNBA, and we're going to definitely talk about some of that as well. But um, I know I listened to one of your earlier interviews, and you mentioned that you know one of the things that you wanted to do was to go play b- basketball overseas, and you to set a goal and an accomplishments. I mean, it means the world. Uh, it means so much. So, like I said, that's why we're giving you a round of applause now because you're going to do such incredible things overseas you know and i'm definitely looking forward to watching your game grow and watching you continue to play and ball out over there as well i appreciate that thank you i'm i'm ecstatic you know dream come true for me for sure yeah so i don't is how much can you talk about like how did you end up you know signing or deciding to play with uh this club overseas yeah yeah, so the process was pretty crazy. Um, you know, once the season ended, you know, you kind of take a couple of days, couple, about a week, trying to figure out what what's next. Um, and you kind of just get your mind back, um, you know, because you're running around crazy usually during the season. You're kind of just like, okay, let me take a few minutes to relax here. And then kind of trying to figure that out. Um, so first thing I started was I got an agent, um, awesome, awesome agent that I was able to sign with. And it, it was really interesting because – I don't know how many people know about the the process of trying to figure things out, but like in terms of figuring out an agent, you know, you, you kind of have a couple of phone conversations and then you make a decision. So it's a little bit different than the typical, typical recruiting process or something like that, that you would go through for college, which was what I was used to. So I end up, um, you know, talking to my agent, trying to figure out what goals he had for me. He had already, you know, set some stuff up for me trying to figure out, what necessarily I wanted, what I didn't want. Um, great phone conversation um, with him. And then we kind of just hit off pretty well. And I'm a lot of times I, I have a pretty good gut feeling with how, how my decisions go. And that's what I went with. And I absolutely made the, made the right choice. Um, I also use some references of uh, people that he's um, been agents for and talked to them and, and got resources that way. So it was a different, um, 
different way to do it. Uh, but I think I was very, very excited with the decision I made and um, who I who I ended up going with. And then from there, I was just trying to figure out with WNBA stuff what the draft process was going to be like. I did obviously put my name in the draft. Um, nothing did come out of it, but, you know, there was possibly potential there, and that's all you can really ask for. If you would have told me when I was a little kid I was going to even have a chance to throw my name in the draft, I would have probably looked at you crazy. I, I would have bet on myself, but I would have looked at you a little crazy. And then once I kind of finished out, he said, you know, we'll, we'll wait to hear from from clubs um, overseas. And then I was able to um, get this, get this offer and have a chance to, you know, fulfill my dreams. Awesome. So like I said, look, you, you deserve two round of applause because like I said, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's truly incredible to live out of dreams. I really, really mean that. Um, and like I said, one of the things that we do on Capture the Game is celebrate people's successes. We give them roses while they're still here. You know, you're still literally here in the state, so we don't give you roses while you're on this side. <laughs> uh, you know, Appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, so uh, I don't know how much you can go into like the like the WNBA, like the the draft class, the process. So you you into your name. Like, were you? Did you do any workouts with, with any of the teams? Did you receive any phone calls? It was like, here's my name in the hat. Let's mm -hmm. let's see what happens. Yeah, I was a little bit more just. Um, I don't know if the right words hands off. It's it's different for everybody. Um, they went through more so my agent than they did through me. So that was why I was on such a time crunch. I guess you could say to figure out an agent or figure out um, you know, who I wanted to re represent me. And it wasn't um, you know, you never know. It was kind of like the what I was going after and you know also you got to be a little bit realistic too that um but in terms of workouts no there was nothing with that or um more so but there was uh you know phone calls with my agent to you know figure things out and not necessarily I think also you see it too whether you get drafted or not there's also training camp invites that you can get which usually happen pretty quickly after the draft also so those can be even talks to that it's just depending on what that team needs um you know I wasn't able to get any of that but the, just the fact to um, you know, put my name into the draft and have a chance to be listed out of, among a lot of good players um, from this draft class uh, was absolutely unbelievable for me. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because, look, it's really, really hard to make it into the W right now. Like, mm -hmm. you have 12 teams, what, 12 players, each team has 144 players, and you, there's, uh, there's, what, like 116 people that entered their name in the draft. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, and only 36 picks, like, like I could do the math all day. Like it, it's really, really hard to get into the, into the, into the debut. So it's definitely no slight to you because you definitely handled your business on the block. And it's definitely, you had, you had your business in the four, actually, I'm sorry, the six years you was at Marquette. <laughs> like, it, so, but I, I do want to talk about that. So, um, so about your time at Marquette, you spent six years there, right? Mm -hmm. You did a very short year, you had a COVID year and then you yep. played out the rest of your collegiate years. Yeah. Uh, how, so how impactful for you or how helpful was having a COVID year for you? I, I think it was um, everything in terms of just that fifth year um, going into that sixth year. So many things were so unknown um, when that was both ways, whether it was me going professionally or me staying um, at college, like that was a big thing too, but the hope and, you know, what everyone was um hoping for to uh, have happen was eventually things were going to return to normal, which they started to a little bit more. You know, we started to have fans. And one of the biggest things even talked to my coach was just the normalcy that we kind of forgot or didn't get to have that that fifth year of mine. And it wasn't even like, I remember uh, <laughs> you, one of our first games, we walked out and we were like, uh-oh, there's no fans. Like, what do you mean? Like, it was just like you walk out like a, like a scrimmage in the early part of the year that you're just playing against somebody. And you're like, okay, this is super weird. And like, you appreciate your fans, but like that made my appreciation level go up so much more for them because of just what they mean to us, the community that's like associated with Marquette women's basketball, Marquette in general, um, just the support you get was just crazy. So like the fact that like I, we were missing, that was huge. So like, even like that stuff and then the NCAA tournament bubble, like just things like that, that you're a part of that. Like we're going to go down in history as being a part of it. It was just a lot to handle. And I think the biggest thing of me staying was like, I missed out on a lot of that stuff. So I wanted to get that back. And also uh, overseas was so no one knew what was going to happen. So it was like, maybe I take my chances to go overseas, but 
that that season can get canceled again just like this one did so like it's a lot it was you know I don't think it was there was no way was there a bad choice to be made absolutely but it was more so what would be the best decision for me and that was obviously to stay and continue my career um you know finish out um the awesome time that I had there yeah I I think that's incredible uh I think it's incredibly important that these the collegiate athletes right now was able to to get like we call it the COVID year Mm -hmm. Um, just because like COVID you know robs so many people of different opportunities like maybe going to a tournament one last time maybe playing from a crowns one last time and so it it it, kind of gave us a moment to kind of pause to to really appreciate the having a COVID year and, and you know some and some people in particular it allowed them to do maybe other things like get a get another degree it's there or get, yeah. for you in your case you to for you to obtain your master's if I'm not mistaken uh-huh. right so yeah actually I was able to do my master's in my five years there so I was finishing it my fifth year and then I was in a certificate during that time so I actually was able to get another certificate but what you're talking about about I was so focused on so much within the sports that I actually took a chance and was like, hey, let me take a step back from sports. So I just went out, um, to get just a leadership certificate within more in the business side of things, management, all that stuff. But um, something you just said, one story that kind of came up that was interesting was when COVID, the announcement of uh, that the extra COVID year was given, it was actually the first day of our practice. And so like, we're thinking this is our last year, you know, me and my fellow senior at the time, we're like, okay, let's you know, set the goals, what do we want to have happen? And then this thing gets announced and you're like, okay, let's just not just throw everything out the window, but you're just like, okay, what now? Um, and I remember sitting there and I, I didn't really have a decision. I was like, whoa, like, what do you mean to give me an extra year? So like, I could kind of tell I was so up in the air, but not in a bad way. I was just like, kind of more just like frozen that I was like, what an extra year to play. And so it was, it was a little bit back and forth. And then like, Coach Duffy, my coach, was great about, you know, the communication throughout the year. She's like, you're not pressured right now to make a decision. Like, don't worry. Like, we're going to figure things out, you know, play the year and start to figure things out. And then towards the end, we'll talk about it. But she would do, like, monthly check-ins every couple months. Like, hey, where are you at? Like, what are you what are you thinking? And it was awesome to have her within that situation. And, like, you know, I, I – I, I pretty much knew, like, I think the whole year that I was going to come back, but there was always like, you never know. But for the most part, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to stay here and, and finish out my sixth year um, to play, to play at Marquette. Now, looking back on it, now that I haven't finished your whole collegiate year, mm-hmm. what were your thoughts on playing basketball at Marquette? Oh man, talk about, you talk about a dream come true. Like you talk about how, you know, I play my dream of professional basketball playing at Marquette was absolutely second to none. It's interesting because like with, you know, being there for six years, a lot of people even will ask me, I'm like, uh, you know, where'd you play? And I'll say Marquette. And they're like, Oh, you just finished. And I was like, yeah, I was there for six years. And they're like, you played at Marquette for six years. And I'm like, yeah, I played at Marquette. So like even people's notion of like me being there that long, like, I think a lot of people are like, you're still there. So like it kind of got a running joke between the team and, and a little bit with the league too, of how long I've been there for. But I just, it was like, I just kept on getting something to where I had a chance to stay. So that was really, really cool. And just, but what I got to be a part of from my first year to my fifth year, whether that was my redshirt year, the COVID year, all the years in between, there were so many different dynamics and things that I learned and lessons that I learned and even the coaching changes that I had happened. Like there was so much stuff in that span of six years that m- made me not only mature, but grow up at a, at a place where I never thought I would be or finishing out at. And even the fact that I'm like, there, there, I didn't think it, uh, the day was ever going to come where I was like, I'm going to say I'm done at Marquette. Because it was like everyone, the running joke was like, oh, you have a seventh year? Are you coming back? Like there was always that running joke of like, when are you coming back? Are you ever going to leave this place? And I knew eventually it was going to be over. But just to be able to have a chance to, even on, I think it was on senior night when I like finally, you know, held up my framed uh, jersey and stuff that like it was going to be officially over was like pretty emotional for me just because of the what I put into it, but also what Marquette put into me. Like, I think it's both ways. Like a lot of people are like, well, you put so much in, but I'm like, they also, there was a lot that they gave me and a lot they did for me and, and the memories that I was able to make and the people I was able to know and the relationships I still have to this day is, you know, second to none that I'm going to last a lifetime that besides and outside the basketball court, 
that can never be taken away from me. So that's what was super important to me to be able to play at the place that I played and just the university and what, what it taught me. Favorite memory of playing basketball at Marquette? Oh, wow. That's a good one. Um, our senior night this past year was pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. We were in a close game against St. John's and we were able to uh, squeeze it out towards the end and just being able to have that crowd and having the chance to, there was a possibility of us playing on that floor one last time. I was like, I'm not, I'm not losing this game. Um, and I, I knew we weren't going to. Uh, so that was, that was a lot of fun. If that wasn't, I'd probably have to say we went down to uh, Texas A&M for the, uh, our first and second round of our NCAA tournament. It went into OT and we ended up winning. Um, and we were down by, I think, like, uh, like seven or eight with like a minute left. And the chances of us coming back and winning, and we actually ended up coming back and, and won the game. And it was just like to be a part of it, like those little moments that you remember. Um, I don't know if I could pick one though. Like I'm, there's like more that are popping into my head. I'm like, I could see my red shirt year when we won the championship, like just different stuff like that. Um, I could even say just hanging out with teammates. Uh, so there's, there's a couple, I would say those are like my top three right there. Um, to have to have favorite memories no it's look, it's incredible especially like you, you you as you mentioned you spent six years there so obviously it must be something that you love because you wouldn't um, most people wouldn't just stay at a place for six years especially you know now with people having the, the transfer portal available mm -hmm. to them you know how like what made you decide to like okay i'm gonna stay here at marquette like no matter what because i'm pretty sure most people at least if i'm a collegiate athlete i'm gonna think about you know what i'm gonna, I'm gonna put my name in the transfer portal like, i'm out of here like what made you so committed and devoted to marquette um i would say first off loyalty is a big thing for me um that's just kind of how i've been raised uh, how i've been brought up i've always been when i'm committed to something even at the you could say at the peewee level when you when you start something you finish it uh, that's how my parents have taught me but i would say it's kind of it's kind of interesting when you bring up with the transfer thing and um and there was never ever a doubt that i was not going to stay at marquette and it's interesting because it everyone probably sees from the outside, oh, she had a perfect career. Oh, things were really well. Like there was a lot of ups and downs that I could even go into that. There was a lot of struggles too, that I, that I um, had personally um, with myself and it was just a battle each and every day. So like I could have said, you know, I, I don't think the right words quit, but I could have said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not for this. I want to move on. And that, that's just not the type of kid I am. Um, and absolutely, there's other situations that happen. I totally get that uh, with the transfer portal. But I just think with me, um, when I'd say I'm committed to something, something I'm completely all in and there's no questioning of the trust or the loyalty that you have uh, with me or with anyone around me, um, you know, and I'm, I would run through a wall for any one of the people that I played with or I've been coached by um, with the people that I, I put or with being at Marquette for that long, just because of that's how I am as a person. Um, so I would definitely say. That's kind of a testament to personally myself, but also the the culture that's been presented at Marquette for women's basketball. I think is huge. You know, um, being a Mar being a basketball school, uh, men's and women's basketball is is the thing, and that's uh, you know super important to to what I was looking for in the recruiting process, and that's what I got out of it. So, you know, when you have it right there in front of you, why why leave to go somewhere else? Is kind of where I was also thinking about, but just what what people did for me, what the school did for me, there was no question that I never, ever want to leave that place. Loyalty. I love it. Loyalty <laughs> goes a lot, goes a long way. Uh, yeah. You, you, you mentioned the recruiting process. So now that your collegiate year is over, you know, your collegiate career is over. What were by some of the other schools that you might've been looking at and like, can you imagine life, there now now that you've gone through life at Marquette yeah I was actually there's a couple of higher schools Indiana schools I was looking at um a little bit closer uh that I was looking at so I, I chose a little bit farther of a school um about being you know from Cincinnati Ohio it was about seven hours away uh I couldn't necessarily and they were all great schools great coaches great situations like I didn't have my recruiting process was absolutely awesome but the fact you know I didn't get started recruited till end of my sophomore into my junior year. Um, so it wasn't like I was a complete standout. Uh, I played JV my freshman year. Like I, I got brought out of varsity my sophomore year. So it wasn't like I was 
you know, I tried to push myself um, and then I tried to, you know, take off a little bit in the sophomore and then all the way up through. And one of my things was I wanted to be committed so I could play my senior year and be done with the whole process. So that was kind of like I was giving myself like a, a, a year to figure it out. Um, it's, I'm really big about deadlines. So that's kind of how I was. But uh, I would just say, yeah, the uh, people that recruited me and what they, um, you know, just the, the bring me into there to see what things were like, um, you know, compare schools, all that. And I actually... One of my coaches that I still talk to today, he's my AAU coach at the time, he, uh, the way he did it for me or kind of helped me choose and figure it out was take the emotion out of it. So I was like, okay, what do you mean by that? He goes right down the list. So what do you want in the school and what school has it? And I, I knew what he meant by that. And then the minute I got on the Martin Heads campus, um, that all the list was checked off. There's no question about that. And that's, that's where I uh, decided to do it. Awesome. Uh, look, so your your college process remind me somewhat of what I went through when I was trying to figure out uh, what college I want to go to. So I went end up going to Indiana Tech. Um, I probably could have went to a couple of different choices, but I love the the campus feel for it. I feel like I'm promoting my school now. Um, I, <laughs> All I, for I, it. I, I, yeah, I I you know I love the campus. I love the small the small environment. I had the opportunity to play baseball for a couple of years as well. Um, I didn't make it no higher than the JV team, but um, but still thankful for an opportunity to still play baseball on a on a you know collegiate level, no matter how big or small it is. So um, yeah, it just it just reminded me a little bit of that. You know, that's all. Yeah, so, uh, it's it's yeah. crazy everyone's journey, and they kind of end up. It's very everyone's journey can be super different, but your destination kind of ends up the same, which is kind of crazy how everyone figures themselves out. Um, it does it different ways and not one way is the right way or not one way is the wrong way. It's just how you want to do it uh, for yourself, what you're, what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a bar you just spit, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> that's, that's some wisdom right there. That's what six years pay off for it. Right there. Absolutely. That's my Marquette degree talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, so, okay. So let me ask you this. So let's, let's rewind. So what advice would you give for athletes that's pursuing or trying to play collegiate? You know, what, what advice would you give them right now? Now, now that your, your whole collegiate career is over with, what advice would you want to give to the younger athletes and an audience that are looking to pursue basketball and looking to pursue basketball on the le next level? Man, um, that's a great question. Uh, honestly, I think, uh, and this is one of my mom's quotes that she always tells me because I always tend to get a little harder on myself than I should be, but I think enjoy the moment. Enjoy it. Enjoy the, sh the stress of it. Enjoy, you know, the excitement of it, all the ups and downs that you might feel through it all. You might not feel like you have no idea what's going on and you're trying to decide as a 16, 17, 18-year-old kid for what you want your next five or four or five years to look like and you're like what the heck am I doing right now um but just enjoy the process um through it all and then once you get to the collegiate level enjoy that too um the best thing I could have done was was do that and that's the reason why I think I had such a great time and the reason why I was so successful as well well moms always knows what's best <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way it goes <laughs> yeah um but so okay so Tell me about, uh, so I want to compare the feelings of, of your very first game playing on the collegiate level to your very last game on the collegiate level. Like, tell me about the experience. Was it like bittersweet moments for you? Just tell me, I want, I want to hear about the comparisons from like very first I, I remember, um, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember uh, I wasn't. I wasn't scared, but I was nervous. I know that I know for a fact that I was nervous, but I knew I was ready. I knew when I first, you know, got to um, campus and everything, uh, you know, I registered my first year. And so I had a whole year under my belt. So I was a little bit different than um, a typical student athlete who comes in, usually plays right away, different things like that. So I had a lot under my belt from just being on Key Squad and, you know, seeing things, you know, watching games, watching sideline, watching film, all that stuff. So I had a little bit different um, – way I went about it but uh I was I was very nervous for my first game I ended up going to um I think it was New Mexico we played a away game and the crowd was <laughs> was uh was it was I got my taste of a, of a college crowd in high school you know you get 
you get yelled at if you say stuff. It did not matter what these what these kids were saying or these students. It was it was awesome though um, to be able to play in front of a, a, a hostile crowd like that. They love their basketball out there, and um, to be a part of it, we actually weren't able to pull it out. But uh, just even learning from that, you know, understanding that. Uh, what, how the game went, um, what we could have done better and everything like that. And I remember it was just a lot of excitement um, with me that I was like, okay, I, I can't wait to do this for the uh, time I thought was going to be for the next four years. Um, and then <laughs> kind of transition to my last game, it was, I would say, bittersweet. Like just, you know, the chance of, we had the WNIT run. So you, there was a chance every game was your last. So you didn't really know when it was going to end. Um, but just the emotions wrapped up. It, I definitely say I was way more emotional and I'm not one who shows emotion. A lot of my teammates know that. Um, so from the first one, you're kind of just in a gaze your first game. And then your, your last one, you're kind of like, okay, uh, you know, let me remember every single moment of this that I can um, and soak it all in would definitely be the difference uh, between the, between the two. Awesome. Uh, what, so who are some of your players, some of the people that you looked up to or you feel as though you model your game after? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I would say on the men's side, big one I watched growing up uh, was Dirk Nowinski. He was big. He was uh, it, <laughs> he was he was sought out as this not extremely athletic, but could get the job done type of player. Um, a little bit different of a game, but it worked really well. Um, I remember watching documentaries on him. I just kind of soaked in all the information, watched highlights of his game. Uh, I just liked the way he played, and I was. I was always deemed as not extremely athletic or not extremely fast, but I was like, okay, how can I outsmart you? Or how can I use my IQ to do different things? And I was always willing to learn, learn new moves, do, you know, whatever fit my game. Um, I would say definitely him. And then on the, on the woman's side, um, uh, I would say Elizabeth Williams, I, I kind of started to model a little bit of, uh, um, with her. I would say um, Asia Wilson, Asia Wilson a little bit too. Just uh, different players like that that are well known that um, you know, those are two very good players um to take different things from their game. So I would definitely say those kind of three um were I I think Dirk a little bit more when I was younger and then I started to model more recently from the W uh, with those two players. Gotcha. So like growing up, so here's one thing I want to ask about too. So growing up, so it's always been like for me personally, it, it was always like, you know, here's the NBA, here's the NBA, here's the NBA, you know, and it really wasn't that much attention on, on the W or whatnot. So when you, for you, you know, being a woman or whatnot, like how were you gravitating more to watching the NBA games or were you more so gravitated to no, I need to watch collegiate you know women play I want to be able to watch the W which one did you gravitate to more growing up and also to compare it to where you're at now which one do you watch more of consume more of yeah uh I think I'd say a little bit I I really grew up watching collegiate both men's and women's especially NCAA tournament that to that vibe and that, that that time was unbelievable um I was always watching basketball uh that was always a thing that I that I did um, you wouldn't really catch me watching Netflix. I was more watching games or replays of games, or I turned on NBA TV and try to find a, a rerun or something. Um, I would probably say definitely collegiate, and I think it's shifted since being in um, college. I would say definitely still follow college a lot, um, but I've also watched professional a little bit more um, now. Definitely watch the W way more. I think I would here and there watch it in high school, and then now that I've been so influenced by it uh i would definitely say in the last probably since my senior year of high school way more um so just i would say collegiate at first growing up and then got into the nba a little bit and then i've always been from ohio you're a lebron james fan so that kind of threw you know and then i was a i was a bandwagon fan, fan more so on the lebron james bandwagon wherever he went i went and everyone knows that on my on my uh team so uh that's kind of how that went with him so i'd always watch him but i just like watching kind of the the way that I think the difference between watching basketball and like actually watching basketball, if you get what I mean, you, you, some people just watch the watch. I, I like the watch to like see different things. And I would even like to the point where sometimes a player would do a college move or something like that. Um, I would go out and kind of mess around with it on my driveway or something like that. So I kind of, I'm a very visual learner. Um, that's why I love film so much. So that's kind of how I grew up. And then I transitioned a lot more to the professional level once college hit. 
Yeah, I love that. Uh, I know for me, I'll be watching stuff. I like, oh, I like that. We're going to go ahead outside, <laughs> try this. We go ahead, grab the wife. Like, like, I need you to stand right here. Yeah. And see if this, if this move. So I try to do the move, and it just don't. It don't work out the way it works. <laughs> you need the so. defense. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, like I feel as though like uh, like athletes and film, it needs to go hand in hand. So I'm, I'm glad that you're definitely one of those that is a visual learner, loves the game. Sounds like you're a very student of the game, and I love. That and I think that's going to pay so much dividends for you going forward and also on your next stop. So definitely big kudos for you. Um, I like from everything I'm hearing right now, seeing what I watch on film, you know, everything, you know, you're going to be successful on, a, on your next level. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, you know, speaking of the next level, so, you know, when do you, when, so when do you take off and what are some of the things that you've been doing to prepare you? prepare yourself for this next level of basketball for you mm -hmm. yeah so i'm gonna head off um uh, beginning of uh, september is when i'll leave um and then usually the the time frame of everything is september to april and then if you ever you know the chance of doing well you can get into playoffs and play through may um so i'd say personally i've kind of adjusted my training a little bit more um not necessarily from the college level because i still do you know same lifts um, typical same running, but I'm adding different things into my, uh, you know, um, that I didn't normally do in college. So I'm adding in swimming, I'm doing biking, like I'm doing different stuff to keep me, uh, in shape, I would say from a, a different, uh, cardio, um, area. And then I would say for my training, you know, I don't have, uh, my coaches in terms of the one-on-ones that I used to get and the individuals, and then you get the team practice, you know, it's all, it's one-on-one -on -one training or small group sessions. So, even just doing that uh, to keep in shape and getting those some, some days of shooting, just shooting some days are, you know, let's go really, really hard. And then also playing pick up as much as possible, just to be able to get up and down and practice those moves that, you know, I was utilizing in that one-on-one -on -one session and then translating it out to uh, into to real life uh, scenarios is kind of what I've found. But I would say, yeah, the, definitely the big change is, you know, doing different cardio stuff that I don't normally I wasn't normally doing as much in college um, is what I focus on now. And then I'd say my, my eating habits and the, the dietary, um, uh, not restrictions, but just what I focused on um, for me personally, because that's, you know, as you get older, it's, it, things are a little bit different. So I'm starting to realize that even uh, not practicing, you know, every single day that I'm normally used to, maybe it's like, you know, I'm working out for two hours you're not getting that full team practice that you're normally used to. So just different things like that, I've kind of transitioned. It took me a little bit to figure out, um, but now that I got it down, uh, I feel a lot better about myself. I feel I feel like I'm in a good position to, to go playing and be ready to uh, play over in Spain. So that, that's incredible. Um, one thing that I wish I would have done when I was still a collegiate athlete, and even now, uh, is learn is doing pool workouts like mm -hmm. i think this like pull up workouts is such just amazing works for your body and yeah it feels though that people should do more of it it helps on the joints you know especially mm -hmm. to get get older you know <laughs> things don't don't bend or operate the way that they should so uh um, yeah yeah so definitely, mm -hmm. you know, big on that, but definitely, you know, kudos to you. Uh, continue to put in the hard work. I think it's going to definitely pay off as you transition to overseas. Mm -hmm. um, what day do you take off? Uh, it's either the first or the second. So it's like okay. the first, yeah. And then I go into training camp is what they consider it. And then uh, we'll start creating games, I believe, end of October. Mid to end of October oh. is my understanding. Um, awesome. And then you play all the way through uh until about april mm -hmm. awesome awesome so yeah. one thing that so so far on this podcast we talked a lot about basketball but one thing i want to talk about is life outside of basketball so you know for you especially in college like you know how did you like find an identity outside of athletics mm -hmm. and how yeah, did you, and how did you manage mm -hmm. that yeah that's a great question um I, a lot of my I guess friends, family, I could test that, which is a little bit of a cliche, but I'm super close to my family. Um, you know, and then I have a lot of close friends, even though there's some of my teammates, uh, just being able to hang out with them. Um, one of the big things that I also loved about Marquette was Milwaukee. So we'd always go down, we'd, um, you know, hang out at the restaurants, hang out, uh, down at the beach, go to different festivals. You got summer fest, you got different, um, festivals that you can go to and do stuff like that. So that was super exciting to be a part of. 
But I would just say um, it's interesting because I'm extremely chill outside of basketball and then people see me on the court and they're like, holy cow, you're a completely different person. I just like am a, just doesn't need to do a whole lot, but I can I can make do with what I'm doing. Uh, even something as simple as I've gotten into golf a lot more kind of since I started college because I want to have a, a sport that's not necessarily as serious because I'm so extremely competitive when it comes to it, but just something I can relax on and have that. And again, not saying that that that's not basketball because basketball is really exciting and fun for me, but just something separate that I can kind of take my, um, take everything out and, you know, just, just relax and do something fun. So I'll I'll do that a lot and go with my family to do that. I wouldn't say necessarily that extreme identity change of me because I think so much, it was interesting because I think it was when LeBron had come out with this more than an athlete thing. And I remember thinking about like, okay, what else am I other than, you know, a basketball player? And so I started to figure out, you know, one of the biggest things that I think that's where my, a little bit of my identity switch was like, the ball is going to stop bouncing at some point, but it's like the impact that I can have on people. And like, I want to, I don't care what at the end of the day, what people say about my basketball is like, what was I a good person? Was I a good student athlete? Like, that's what I, that's what matters to me. Um, you know, and then my legacy with basketball is to follow. And that's what my huge thing was about Marquette was like, how can I finish out? You know, one of my, my first coach I had, she was one of the, her slogans was leave the Jersey in a better place. And that's like a big thing for me too. So just like whatever that is and what I'm doing, um, it's kind of, you know, what success looks to me, but I would definitely say outside of basketball, even though it's still in the realm of it is coaching, that's a big thing of impacting kids, impacting younger, um, students of the game, just figuring out like, you know, uh, teaching them in different ways is what I hope to not only continue to do right as I'm doing now, but also do it in the future too. How has coaching been for you so far? It's been going well. Um, I started working with the local AAU program um, recently. Uh, I was actually able, well, I'll start first off. Um, I was working with this AAU program, a 13 new boys. So it was interesting to coach them. They were great, uh, you know, just working with them, picking their brain, also learning how to teach kids um, in different ways. If you, you know, at the college level, your your coach teaches you something and you do it, the, you do it the first time. Like that's how it is. But it's like, okay, how do we, um, you know, just figure it out to teach it a different way, and then also, um, you know, uh, be more, you know, visual learner. Maybe they listen more. So what what works best for them um, was really great to figure that out. And then because of the NIL stuff, I was able to run clinics earlier in the year. So I got to coach a little bit in that way and run clinics, um, post clinics specifically to um, a group of uh, young girls also. So that's been, it's been going really well. Um, and I think it's just kind of a day-to-day thing, you know, what you give to being a player is what you got to do as a coach too, you know, cause this, that's the expectation that people, people have of you. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun to, to train people and be one-on-one sessions and kind of see where that's where I was, you know, 12 to 12 to 15 years ago and this is where I'm ended up so just giving back in that way is super important to me and I'm glad to be a part of it I'm glad that you are able to to give back to the community uh just because like you know I know for me personally if it wasn't for mentors along the way Uh or people that poured into my life I wouldn't be where I am today and so um don't not not to say that you haven't, but you know there is so much of value in coaching, um, and just being a role model, just you know being a voice for for students, uh, especially when you have you know you they can look at you and say okay like she knows what she's talking about like she's turned to go like they may not understand the relevance of playing basketball overseas, but you know those kids one day will be like would think that you know yo miss lauren told me that you know <laughs> i need to i need to do this and you know and i could be successful mm-hmm. so yeah um and i, I love the was that the the, the what, it wasn't the cliche that you said but it was like leave the jersey in a can you, what, was that was oh that the leave, the leave the jersey in a better place that's one of my that's uh a, yeah mm-hmm. that's a bar <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i was like that has stuck with me and that probably will stick with me for the for the rest of my life there's no question about that yeah absolutely mm-hmm. um man okay so i'm gonna ask one last final question before we go into a rapid fire question come around but um what about do you have any advice for um for the collegiate athletes right now that are still playing ball and still, you know, trying to figure out what's the next thing that you want to do uh, after, you know, 
other than play play ball or life outside of basketball? What's your advice to your fellow athletes that are still playing collegiate athletes trying to, you know, try to decide to figure out what's next in their life? Yeah, I would say take uh, take all the all the opportunities presented to you. Um, I would say, uh, you know, whatever options you have, you, you know, put them all on the, on the table and don't just take one out because you're like, eh, that doesn't seem like my what I want to do right now or eh, that doesn't seem as fun or as cool. I think take all your opportunities that you have um, once you're finished up and then, you know, make the decision that you think is best for you. And if that's right in the list to take the emotion out of it, um, then, then have or then do that. But I think just super important to, uh, just like anyone says, make the most of it. Um, that's what I would say. You know, as you're finishing up, it's you're only a, a college student or a college athlete once. So, you know, enjoy that process, but also then enjoy the process after that. Um, you're trying to figure your next next chapter out. It's not, it's not something you got to be scared of either. I think it's something that's um, enlightening and something that's different uh, and something that will be fun. And whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. You said it well. You said it well. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and transition, transition into our rapid fire round. So we call it we call it the game within a game segment. So we're just going to have fun. It's a little rapid fire round. So my very first question for you is, are you ready to play? <laughs> Absolutely. She's like, duh, come on now. All right. I'm ready um, to go. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, chocolate chip, chip cookies or oatmeal raisin? Oh man, I think I'm gonna go against the status quo with this one. I uh, oatmeal raisin. Okay. Look, so okay, so typically I'm gonna, uh, all right, I'm gonna re-ask this question because I forgot I left out some cookies on here. So we got chocolate chip, we got oatmeal raisin, we got sugar cookies, mm. we got oatmeal chocolate chip, and you got snickerdoodle. Oh, you might throw me with the snickerdoodle. I might have to sorry oatmeal raisin, you're going snickerdoodle it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Snickerdoodle is not a bad choice. Like I've yeah. you know, I've grown in love with Snickerdoodle. Yeah. Recently, so. Can't go you can't go wrong with any of them to be honest. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Uh TV shows or movies? Oh wow. Um Oh man, uh movies. Yeah, movies. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie? <laughs> It's, a little, it's actually a kitty one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's my that's my favorite. Look, there's, I there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't discriminate over here. Like, I appreciate that. But when I tell people, they're like, "Didn't you watch that when you were ten? And I'm like, "Yep, yeah, I still watch it now." I, that's like, nothing so? wrong with it. Yeah, I'm like, so and oh. <laughs> uh, Okay, so how about this? Your your favorite five in the W. So it is that you don't have to be positioned. Is this who your favorite five in the W right now? Like top five, or like what do you like, or like favorite? Yeah, yeah just favorite five. It, you don't necessarily have to be your top five. You want to do your top five, you can, but you could just Man. be your favorite. Your favorite five in the W right now. All right, I gotta go, Kelsey Plum. Um, I gotta go oh, with my girl from. Yeah, Kelsey Plum. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, yeah. I gotta go with my girl from Marquette University, Natisha Heideman. No question about that. Uh, also on that team, I definitely had to go with John Cole Jones. You gotta go with Candace Parker. Uh, the way she was able to lead that championship last year. Uh, yeah. and then, mm, probably just being from Milwaukee, I would have to say Enrique uh, Gupawale. Definitely love her game too. So yeah. I think that's that's five. Yeah. I yeah, definitely I think say. So. Yeah. Yeah. If I had a I don't know. It's it's hard. I mean, there's so many good so many good players so that many. uh yeah. Yeah. That, that that's what makes the league what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that's why each one of those spots matters because yeah, like that that league is so tough right now. Yeah. Um so on the flip side, who's your favorite five in the NBA? Cool, man. Um, definitely LeBron. Got to throw my guy Ohio in out there. Uh, then I would also say hmm, uh, another Marquette guy, I would say Jimmy Butler. Big fan of him. Um, I would say Draymond Green. I like watching him a lot. 
That's three. Two more. Mm. I like LaMelo's game. LaMelo, uh, LaMelo Ball, like watching him play. And then uh, I have to say DeMar DeRozan from um, the Bulls. Uh, I like him a lot. So sadly, I don't know if I put any forwards or centers. I didn't give them any love, but they got a couple. I was a big Tim Duncan fan, too, I used to be. So you could throw him in there as a, as a six. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I like the list. So like, like I didn't, I didn't really appreciate Demar's game until she, until he came to Chicago. I'm like, all right, just make it ball. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. That the, team, if that, if that team with the injury, they would have been, it would have been something. Um, yeah, that would have been really, really exciting. It's crazy too with living in Milwaukee, the Bucks. How, how, um, awesome it is for the city and just being able to watch them play so close to being close to Marquette, you just, you ride down in downtown and the, the community that, you know, supports them is absolutely insane. Yeah. So you was in Marquette, well, you was in college at the time that they won the championship. So how was that experience? Yeah. Like, like how was I actually, yeah, won? I was, uh, I was just like downtown at a restaurant uh, for game six. And it was, it was like, a proud mom moment. I, I like, I had nothing to do with it, but you just thought you, you won too. like the way that, um, the way that it just happened, the way it was figured, like the way they were able to get through that. That was when Giannis got, he got hurt for a couple of games, I think in the Atlanta series and they were able to win that game and just then going in and finishing it out in the finals is absolutely insane. And they, I don't think I necessarily understood the history of the Bucks, um, until like, you know, that being their first uh, championship, it was something that I'll never, like, forget uh, or be able to be a part of. And then you're part of the championship parade. We went down as a team to see it, and that was awesome, too, just to be a part of that. Uh, was second to none, and, you know, you never know when it's going to happen again, but the fact that we hear just the buzz around the city, too, uh, and and people knew where Milwaukee was. They're like, oh, you're you you're with the books around like yeah like so you got the hype with that too which is pretty fun that fun to talk about yeah that's incredible uh <laughs> i've i haven't really i mean i've been around i've been around i've been in a city in which like they've won a championship and not like not something that i could experience as an adult so mm-hmm. like i'm originally from chicago so i grew up on the okay. south side so like you know watching like the chicago white Sox win you know mm-hmm. the cubs won when yeah, I wasn't really living there in the city, but mm-hmm. you know, Chicago Sky one I wasn't there for because yeah. I live in Indiana now. So like you know, but we did go to some of the finals games. So that was also awesome watch because we experienced finals basketball. So yeah, really, really a good experience. Um, mm-hmm. but I can only imagine what the city is like after like they won. Like that's like that's the next like thing on yeah. the list to be a part of. Cause you probably see it. Like I, I used to grow up watching when I would always watch like NBA or WNBA and you see like the city of people like going crazy on video, but you're like, I would love to be a part of that. And like yeah. being a part of it, you're like, Holy cow. Like this is insane to be like in that moment. It was, was pretty cool. Yeah. Just to be around so many happy people. You know? <laughs> <I> know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, okay, so let me ask you this: um, Which accomplishment are you more proud of, the fifteen hundred points or the eight hundred career rebounds? Oh, oh! My position coach, <laughs> Coach Jay, would probably say the the eight hundred rebounds because she was always telling me that I'm not rebounding enough, and I wasn't. Uh, she was always right with that. Um, oh, that's a good one. I'd probably say the points, though, just um, how I was able to get them. Uh, you know, uh, different ways that I had to utilize my moves um, to be efficient with them, I think was super important. So I, I definitely say the fifteen, the 1500 points and it, it didn't always look pretty, but I got the job done. So I definitely say that that was more, more of an accomplishment. Both, both yeah. are awesome to be a part of and be in the record yeah. books, but definitely that one. Yeah, that's for sure. So definitely no slights to either one, but your whole <laughs> career overall is as like it's is awesome so <laughs> thank you uh, appreciate that here, here, here's a harder question for you so your favorite so i'm gonna help you out a little bit but your favorite three teammates that you had oh wow man are oh, you putting me on the spot right now um 
definitely have to say teaspoon tisha heideman uh just swaggy t was something else to be a part of and to see her even her senior year when she won player of the year just to be a part of that and see her go to the league um and just still talking to her this to this day uh yeah. has been awesome to see her success and where she's gone and what she's doing now um i would have to say my second one would probably be my roommate uh Altia Anderson, we grew basically grew up together for the four years she was there, and then uh, we came in together, and then uh, I was staying for my fifth year, and she had finished out during that was 2020, the COVID year. So uh, definitely playing with her was just still again talking to this day, trying to even figure something out to be able to play together at some point. Um, definitely playing with her taught me a lot too in different ways. And the last one. I don't know if I would say everybody like there's been so many people that I could just say if you gave me like 35 absolutely I would name everyone on the list and that's the thing I've been with six years of teammates too which is yeah. like 15 per um so that's uh yeah um probably let's see let's see oh yeah. man you put me on the spot I know. I, um, I look, I, w- I wanted to somehow give teammates some love because teammates, <laughs> you know, I wanted them to be able to come back and listen to the podcast. And, and oh, no, I get it. Yeah, um, like, yo, I heard my name. Thank you for the shout out. And kind of give you some, <laughs> give you some grief on your way out. Like, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, was... I want my other teammates to feel bad either. Like, what do you mean? I'm not your fan. Nah. No. Um, <laughs> everyone's had an impact on me too. That's what's crazy. And what, in one way or another, it's been awesome. I'll probably say, uh, the last one. Mm. my teammate just who I just finished with Kristen McLaughlin uh her coming to make a choice come to Marquette and just the way that our leadership styles we were figuring out and what we you know learned from each other and learned how to you know lead the team in different ways um was amazing to be a part of and the impact that she's had on me um and you know uh, there'd be times where I'd be very, very high and she had to bring me down a couple of times, but she was able to do that. And we had a realistic, you know, or extremely real relationship that we could tell each other, you know, how, how things were and, you know, where we need to get better at. And that's what I appreciate those, those real relationships is what I, I try to find, um, with people. And I definitely say I had that, uh, with her. Yeah. Carissa is really, uh, she's, Really, a special dope an individual. She, she she's from Fort Wayne, so I've seen some. Yeah, of I was gonna say from that, Indiana. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, so I've seen some yeah. games when she was at Purdue. Uh, definitely talked to her, like you know, somewhat before and after games. But dope, dope individual. Definitely, mm-hmm. I wish her uh, to, her wishes. Well, I wish her best of luck going forward. With everything that she, if anything that she tries to do. So, always yeah. gotta shout out the hometown people. So, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. I I threw that your way. That that worked out well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else here? Um, so what was your pregame ritual? Oh man, um, I always <laughs> a lot of people joke with me because I used to get whether that was we used to stay at the the arena like in between games or practices i used to get to practice like two hours before like or or games like couple like two two and a half hours before like i started getting ready because i was just always like i always wanted to get going that's how i was i always like it's funny because there's like early people and then there's super early people and i'm like that like over the top like he would be like, what time are you leaving? I'm like, this time they're like, yeah, I'm not going with you. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll see you at the gym. Like, so it's always kind of how I've been. I like to just, let's say take my time, but just kind of get in a zone and, and get, get rolling. Um, so get there super early or start getting ready super early. Uh, and whether that was, you know, um, kind of hanging out in the training room before, but I think, um, one of the big things that I did is something super simple was I always had a time I left shoe before my right. That was it. That was like the pregame ritual that I, that I had just to kind of give my like, okay, I'm re- as soon as I put my shoes on and lace them up, I was like, it's game time. So like, then I was ready to go. And then I'd always have to go out at like the 75 minute mark to get my shots up. That was always something that I had to do. Um, and it was like three or, or two other pe- players of uh, teammates of mine we go out at the same time. Like that's, that was like, okay, let's go. Like we always knew to be, and it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a note or like a, a speakable thing. We just kind of, we all just looked at each other, got up and walked out. Like it was kind of just like something like that. We just kind of gained that throughout the year that that's when we were going out and that's when we were going to do our pregame. And then I have my certain shots and certain spots that I go to that I kind of made up in my head 
that I've been very consistent with um, to make sure that I get so many shots before games uh, that kind of like what I like to do. That's incredible. Um, that, that's really incredible though. Um, if you can go pro in any other sport other than basketball, what sport would it be? Definitely golf. Absolutely. No question. Golf. I, I absolutely love it. I play with my family, um, a lot, uh, try to, you know, get out as much as I can as my free time. I'll go super early to the course just to make sure I can like play on my day. Well, uh, golf is not easy. Yeah. The professionals make it look extremely easy. Uh, and then you get on the course, you're like, how the heck do they do this or whatever? But, uh, definitely golf if I could. Uh, favorite sports moment you've either seen or witnessed. Mm. Favorite sports moment. Uh, probably. I get chills a lot with sports moments, I would say, but probably when um, in 20, I think it was 2016 when the Cavs won the, um, won the championship, when LeBron brought one home to Ohio, and that was a big, obviously it's a big deal regardless, but it was an even bigger deal with that. Uh, definitely, I remember, and they won it on the road in game seven at Golden State. Uh, so that was pretty epic to, to watch. And I remember I was so lucky in that series because – no one thought he was going to be able to do it. And, you know, when I think it was Kyrie hit that shot and then uh, LeBron did something and it was like, oh, this is over with. And it was like, holy cow, they actually won. And I remember sitting, I was in my dorm room at the time and I was like, they just won a championship. Like I saw, I have chills like talking about, that's definitely like just all the media of him leaving, coming back and what you probably had to endure. Um, it was pretty sweet to see kind of a full circle moment. Yeah, that that particular championship will always hold dear to me, uh, just because um, I spent time with family uh, who's like who's no longer here at the time. So it was like one of the last things that we kind of done together. And then so, um, but still like incredible to watch him win a championship at that particular time, especially everything that was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, two more questions for you. Well, one it's like it's like a question and like a statement. Oh, uh, what? Um, if you can go back and redo one collegiate game, which game would you take back? Oh, wow. One of our championship games and uh, that we, uh, you know, <laughs> that we didn't, we weren't able to pull out. Um, we lost on a buzzer beater. Uh, I can't remember what that was, was two years ago, three years I think three years ago and i wish that that could be flip-flop to obviously getting a win uh that was probably one of the toughest games i've been a part of because you you're so high for a minute and then you're so low and then you're so like the which i appreciate the highs and the lows but it was it was a tough one for sure um if i could go with, do that one or i would say our last nit game if you ever had a chance you know to flip that around and then keep posting and possibly have the ability to win the wnit that would have been pretty sweet too so probably kind of give you a two answer, but I would say definitely those two. Oh, I appreciate the insight of all <laughs> both of those because like there's so it's so much sports going on. You don't get a chance to really capture or know of everything that's going on. So especially mm -hmm. like you know capture players' emotions during those particular times, like the buzzer beater, the mm -hmm. WNIT, like trying to get to that. So I appreciate you sharing that with me in yeah. the audience. Yeah, of course. Yeah, happy to. Yeah, I think it's important too. like a lot of people only see the, the things that go right. And I think it's also important to show, you know, things don't always go as perfect. My, my career is a perfect example of that. Um, so even having that, that it, it's not the reality is everything doesn't go as well as people think, maybe from the outside a little bit. But, you know, inside it's a little bit different. So definitely all for giving that insight. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, if you could take over any organization, which organization would you choose? Wow. <laughs> I would definitely say Jordan because I love the shoes. But, um, man, uh, these bubbly companies have been pretty sweet to me. I've been really into the different, t I know this probably sounds really weird, but like different types of water and stuff. I'm on like a water only diet. So even trying different things like that just to get a little taste. Uh, maybe a bubbly company or something like that. Um, 
would definitely be pretty interesting to me. I don't know why, but them or sports company, doesn't matter if it's a franchise, like a team or um, a sports uh, company, I would definitely choose one of them. So either water or sports is the two that I'm, I'm going with. Uh, okay. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. But you did remind me of something I, I wanted to ask about earlier was, uh, did you get a chance to take advantage of the NIL when it came available to you? Because when it came available to like your last year of college? Yeah, it was a little not up in the air. It just, there was a lot going on with um, what it was all about, what it meant, what were people doing. So those clinics that I did earlier in the year, I was able to utilize that for the NIL, um, which I thought was perfect. I'm uh, very much more basketball oriented when it comes to that stuff of making money um, that way, I guess. So from the clinics and host and like training sessions is what I did um, for that. Uh, I did get like a couple I guess offers or chances to do something else like via social media that I um, just wasn't going that route as much. I was actually probably not, not that I not focused on this stuff, but I was so focused on basketball. I didn't really want to deal with any of it. Um, So I was just like, I want to finish my, you know, career out as best I can. Uh, And it's, it's interesting with NIL stuff. We were, our coaches were showing us presentations and you, you know, you talk about your schedule already as a college athlete and then you're like, Oh, then you got to add this stuff to it. But in, in a good way, it's like, you know, the fact that you can make money off your name. Absolutely. Um, and then they also did for us uh, through Marquette was you, they sold your jersey in the, in the store. So you got to, you know, um, I guess a stipend or money from that, depending on how many were sold um, for you. So that was also a chance to do that. Uh, but mostly just clinics and then obviously the jersey sales also. That's cool. That's cool that Marquette does that. So yeah. tip it out there for, for the younger generation. If you look at yeah. the schools, look at Marquette. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> uh, so, okay. So I got to ask this. So with you going to go play for Spanish club, Barcelona, Barcelona Celesto Leganes, I, mm-hmm. I think that's pronounced it right. What's the message that you want to send to them? Or like, what do you want the fans to know about you? Mm, just that I'm a, a a kid that's one committed and two that's gonna you know work extremely hard to um, win a lot of games and hopefully you know have a chance to to play for a championship and uh, someone that's gonna give it all they got. Uh, that's kind of how I've prided myself on the six years of you know playing basketball, but who I am as a as a person also um, outside of basketball. So definitely someone that's gonna give you all, all they got. Um, and hopefully it can be extremely successful as a, as a team as well. I think so. I think they got a good one on their hands, but last I appreciate but not that. least, Thank you. yeah, yeah, of course. Last but not least, uh, where can people follow you on, on social media and keep up with your career and keep up with everything you have going forward? Uh, yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I, I, my handle, I should know I should, um, uh, but just search Lauren Van Clunen. Uh, I got, I got Twitter. Um, I got Instagram. I got Facebook, got a LinkedIn even. Uh, so if people want to, you know, send it there, that's where mostly I'll be posting my stuff with, uh, going over Spain and then also, um, the links that you can view and watch the games at, uh, will be more so via Instagram. So, um, definitely continue to follow my journey on, on those social media handles. And I appreciate the support. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. Go ahead, type in Lauren Van Clooney <laughs> on Twitter, Instagram, keep up with career. We're definitely going to be rooting for you going forward. Uh, fans and listeners, you already know what it is. We thank you and appreciate you for tuning in and listening to the episode of Capturing the Game podcast. Please rate and review us. Uh, we're going to be adding some things in the description, so uh, please continue to be on the lookout for those. Also, follow us on your favorite social media platform, whether it be Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube at CTG underscore podcast. Uh, and like I said, um, please continue to like and subscribe to the podcast. This is the start of season two. Looking forward to doing some big things and be b- bigger and better. Um, Lauren, thank you so much for being on today's podcast. So you, you brought me out of hiatus. So thank you for being on today's podcast. And definitely best of luck going forward with your career. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. This was a, this was a great time. Awesome.